things going. We have got a great guest joining us today here on iHeartRadio and also AMFM, 247.com, tune in iTunes, 50-plus AMFM stations across the country and around the world, and we have got a great guest joining us today. Uh, we've also got our great co-host, Dan Perkins, best-selling author, uh, political writer. He is also uh, venturing into the, the world of... Uh, um, all sorts of different things he's involved in, but we've got uh, Dan with us today as well. And we have got a great guest joining us. George Santos is with us today. And uh, Mr. Santos, welcome to the broadcast. How are you, sir? Hi, how are you? Thank you for having me. Uh, I know we've had some hiccups with scheduling, and uh, I'm sorry about that. No, 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 no. Good, good things come to those who wait. I'm glad that we've got you on with us today here on our big program. And, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and uh, we want to give you a little bit of background here on Mr. Santos as well. By the way, if you get a chance, check out our website, JiggyJaguar.com, for more information. We'll have the uh, complete interview up there with uh, Mr. Santos as well. And um, congressional candidate, he basically is calling on state attorney general to swiftly and thoroughly investigate uh, tropical storms. And uh, George Santos is with us today. He joins us live here on a broadcast. He's a Republican candidate for New York's third congressional district. He was born in Jackson Heights, Queens, to uh, immigrant parents. And uh, Mr. Santos grew up in a tight-knit Queens family, and he's with us today here on a broadcast. Check out his website, George4NY.com. And uh, Mr. Santos, talk to us a little bit about some of the different things that you're, you're, you're championing and uh, calling for and all these things. Give us an education here, my friend. Yeah, absolutely. So um, as you mentioned here real quick, um, I've called um, upon our Attorney General Tisha James here in New York, a Democrat, to investigate the response time of PSEG Long Island as to the 430,000 people who were left powerless, some for up to 10 days. So initially, a little storm comes off the way, not a hurricane. I mean, Florida deals with hurricanes all the time and powers back within maybe 72 hours, worst case scenario. Yeah. Um, some isolated issues, right? Here in New York, where we're taxed, you know, tenfold of what Floridians are taxed, we had some people waiting up to 10 to 15 days with no power. And obviously that didn't sit well with me. I called upon an investigation. I urged the attorney general to please move her behind <laughs> to go look into what was going on. Obviously, uh, piggybacking off of my initiative, the Long Island Coalition of Congressmen, well, the liberal coalition of Long Island con Congress people um, decided to, you know, take on my lead. It's sad that a candidate has to actually go out and do the job that the actual elected officials aren't doing. Yes, yes. George Santos with us today. George Santos for Congress. Uh, get more information at George4NY.com. He's got his issues up there. He's got some information on how you can get involved. Uh, any type of uh, news, you can also sign up for his email updates as well. He tells you why he's running for Congress. And uh, also, you can stay connected with him on social media, on Facebook and Twitter as well. And uh, Dan Perkins, uh, jump in there, my friend. I know you've probably got some questions for Mr. Santos. I certainly do. Um, I, I guess the first question I want to ask, are you are you on a speakerphone, sir? I am actually on my computer. I'm on the Skype version of the computer. <laughs> okay, could you, could you turn, the, turn the volume down just a little bit? It's terribly distorted. Because you're kind of feeding back, my friend. Can you hear me better now? You gotta, you gotta turn down a little bit. If, do you have some, uh, some headphones or some earbuds you can put in that might make the, uh, that that might fix some things on your end? Is that possible? I'm fixing things on my end right now. <laughs> well, we'll do this while you're doing that. I'll, I'll, I'll give you some plugs here. It, it's time to take back the house with George Santos. A new era of representation is coming to D.C. He's a Republican candidate for NY3, and uh, he wants to stop socialism. He wants to make America great again, and he wants to be back, back, making everything happen 
And uh, you can check out george for ncom for more information on what he's doing. He's got a, a great following over there on social media, on Facebook, and on Twitter. He's got a lot of good folks helping him out with this uh, campaign. He's got a lot of professional help as well. And you can join the fight to take back the district over there as well. They want to stop the socialist agenda from destroying Long Island and the country. And uh, you can get more information, George for NY. Dot com and he's with us today here on our world famous Cheeky Jaguar radio broadcast and uh, why we wait on uh, Mr. Santos to get that uh, get those technical issues taken care of um, Dan bring us up to speed on your your latest book here and uh, then we'll go back to uh, Mr. Santos when he's ready well uh, I just are you there George I'm uh, here Is yeah better yeah he's oh, yeah yep. I, We'll, t- we'll talk about my book some other time. Talk to <laughs> okay. Talk to yes, people. yes. Well, jump in there. George, I, I live on an island in the Gulf of Mexico outside of Fort Myers called Sanibel. I moved here from uh, Morris County, New Jersey, where I lived for 35 years. I worked on Wall Street in the city, and um, I loved New York. I loved L-O-V-E-D, loved in New York. I look at what has happened to the city. I mean, I I don't know whether you heard this, but there's an organization called Hudson Valley Communities, and it's a a number of small towns on the Hudson uh, who banded together to promote their cities and towns. And about uh, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, the, 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 the communities on the Hudson sent out a notice to all of its residents. It's not safe to go to New York City anymore. Don't go. Uh, I have two sons, one who lives in Westchester and one who lives in Summit, New Jersey. Uh, the one who lives in Westchester commuted into the city at Midtown uh, for a number of years. He has not been to his office in Midtown uh since the pandemic broke out uh his commute will by train and and then he he goes uh takes it into into um uh grand central station then takes a train up town to 57th street but his office is on the 57th floor of a building in new york and they only allow so many people in the elevator so it takes him hours upon hours to try to even get into his office. Uh, he's lost all passion for wanting to go to New York City. I, I, my wife and I, we love the theater. We've gone for years and years and years and years and go to restaurants. And our youngest son, who lives in, in Summit, New Jersey, he and his wife love the city. He said there's no reason to go there anymore. So... What's happened? What happened to our city? Is it socialism? As you are, you, is that what you're saying? And it, and some people are now saying it could take ten or fifteen years for the city to recover. Well, what do you Dan, think? Give us. So 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 let me point out a few things to you about um, what you just said, and they're, they're you're very accurate. So your son and I probably work around the same vicinity. My office is in the A and B building on Fifty Fifth and Sixth. So if, if your son's commuting to 57th Street, he's around the vicinity I'm in. So right, uh, right. I can, I can, I can uh, resonate with the passion being killed. Right before the pandemic started, I'm a, I'm a regional director for a private equity firm um, that deals mainly with uh, secured fixed income here in New York. It's uh, Florida-based, Florida-headquartered, but uh, you know I, I run the operation here in New York City. We have been shattered. The city is destroyed. Um, and, I'll, and I can't say this enough. And yes, it in part is due to a socialistic takeover of a neo-Marxist that is Bill de Blasio, the mayor of New York City. This is a man who walked into Kofers with almost $9 billion in surplus. By the end of his first term, he had already destroyed the money. His wife is, should be investigated for um, misuse and misappropriation of over a billion dollars from city funds that Bloomberg had graciously left him because he was a good administrator. Um, And it's sad to see that we're going back to the 1980s of the Dave Dinkins era. Um, There was recently a cover on the New York Post that said, Bill, do something. 
and it was an exact replica of the Dave Do Something newspaper <laughs> cover of 1984, uh, 1988. Yeah. So that's legitimately what we've come back to. We have, we're replicating the Dave Dinkins era here in New York. So for you, you were here around that time, according to what you, yes. you just said. Yeah. You know it wasn't the place to be. You know, the red light, the red light district, uh, quote unquote, famously known as Times Square, <laughs> that's coming back. Yeah, uh, we're mm -hmm. starting to we're starting to see the walkers, if, if you know what I mean, back on the yeah. streets. And we have a state Senate in New York State that is supporting the legalization of prostitution. So this is what we're wow. up against. We're up against our freedoms are being taken away from us. The police is being dismantled. New York City has a has right now currently 27,000 rental apartments available, vacant. Landlords are giving 30, 40% discounts, two, three, four months free rent to stimulate people to come back into the city. There's wow. an average There's an average of 40% retail storefront that was already vacant pre-COVID. That number has jumped now to 50 post-COVID. Madison Avenue, the famously known shopping avenue, is a ghost town. Most of the stores are boarded up. A lot of the stores have left. Stores from all these luxury couture brands, Moschino, Balenciaga, they're gone. They want no part of this. They were looted, destroyed, burnt to the ground during the riots of 2020 that the Democrats so so humbly put as peaceful protesters. And the police was chained to, 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 to not doing anything. They were left adrift looking and not and, and absolutely unable to act. Now, this is New York City. Your son not wanting to commute from Westchester to New York, I don't blame him. I went back into the city uh, right around June, and when we thought the city was going to start waking back up again, uh, the mob took over. And as the mob took over, we went back into our quarantine bunkers. And that's where we are right now. You go. I was just last Tuesday. I had a meeting in the office. I was walking in Manhattan on a Tuesday at 11.30 in the morning, and I saw, I could count, nine people from the parking garage to the door of the building. I counted on my fingers, nine people walked by me. And this is on 55th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. That is unheard of. We are living in apocalyptic times in New York. I know it sounds dramatic. It sounds like I'm feeding into some conspiracy. I'm just stating to you the facts. That is exactly the feel when you walk up and down Manhattan streets. By 9 o'clock, the city that doesn't sleep is far gone into a deep, deep sleep. The Sandman is doing his job every night around 9 o'clock. Wow. So that's where we're living in. That's New York City for you right now. And that's a perfect pillar to show the rest of the country that's what we're heading into. Portland. Uh, 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 Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Washington, New yes. York City, Chicago. This is what the country will look like if we do not take back the House of Representatives, if we do not secure the presidency of the United States to Donald Trump, and if we do not hold on to the Senate. Our livelihoods, our lives are at stake. Kids, uh, I've one, got, year, uh... one last point. When yes, was it last that you saw that a one-year-old child was shot and killed? That happened twice in the last 60 days in New York City. Holy smokes! And it just, um, uh, yeah, you know, I, I, you know, I, I, I look at what's going on, and uh, I built a very successful career working in New York City, a money management practice, consulting practice, foundations, all kinds of. It was all because of I. I went there as a broker in training in 1973 and went out to the World Trade Center on the observation platform and said, somehow I've got to get back here. This is where I was supposed to be. But I want to ask you a question. Um, I write, as Jim would say, I, I, I write a lot of commentary for a whole bunch of different organizations all over the country. And I've been, I've been wrestling with this one item, and I think – You, you've helped me codify what I need to say. Um, there was a woman who I heard who was a call-in person on Russia's show maybe two weeks ago. 
maybe no, a week ago, because of the Republican convention. And the rush wasn't there, but the guest host said, so what did you think of the, the Republican convention? She well, the said, Republic she, wait, she, Go ahead. She, she said, that Republican convention is what I've been waiting for all of my life. And that struck me because one of the reasons I believe that the Democrats are so angry with Donald Trump is unlike uh, McCain and and uh, Mitt Romney and all the other Dem Republican candidates, regardless of president or other things, when the Democrats attack, they lay down. Donald Trump didn't lay down. Donald Trump pushed back, and he pushed back hard. And I see more and more Republican candidates for incumbents or new people like yourself who are not ashamed to stand up and push back. Is this the quote the new Republican Party that we don't take any crap from the Democrats? We are not the Democrat. We are not the Republicans, as as you famously noted. We're not Democrats like McCain or and 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 and, and Mitt Romney. And I, I I had a lot of respect for McCain. He you know war veteran. Um, this is the new party. This is the energized. We double down when they when they come for us. This is the party of we are going to fight for our liberties and there's no stopping us. Yes, this is very much Donald Trump has awakened the populace and, and the common people to realize that their country was taken away from them many, many years ago. And he's giving it back to them. Never in my life. And, and I can say maybe in yours, have we seen so much wealth distribution and opportunity and growth in this country as we've seen it during President Donald Trump's term. I agree. I agree. So is there a possibility that, that New York State could go Republican? I say it a lot. I, I, I like to be pragmatic about things, but I think we're a long due for another 1984. And if you remember that electoral map, that was a sight to see. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've said to Jim on the show, I think Donald Trump will win at least 360 electoral votes. Uh, I, so I, I said we should we should be winning about 320. So we're we're a little far off, but I I, I unfortunately we I recognize that there are states like Washington, Oregon, and and um, California that we could never win, um, and 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 that's putting it lightly. Not because of the good people there, but just because of all the Un, unverified, I'd say, uh, voters that are able to vote, cast their votes, and we'll never find out um, the real deal that goes on there. But, you know, at least until we have another common sense governor come into place there. They're due for a Republican governor any time also. So, right. so long as it's not another celebrity. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's awesome. Let me, let me ask you, a, a, if I might ask another question. Yes, did, go IQ ahead, make, did IQ make it on? Uh, IQ sent me an email. He had a uh, emergency, and uh, he's going to join us next week. So. Okay, okay, all right. So uh, what I want to ask you, sir, is um, listening to what you're saying, uh, I've, I've, had, I've been fortunate to work on a, several congressional campaigns in my career, um, and I, I took on major giants and, and – incumbent Democrats who'd been there for a long time, and we got real close. So I would ask you the question that I would ask other people that I've talked to as, a, as somebody campaigning for office. What are the top three issues, the constituents that you're trying to serve, what are they most concerned about? Right now, according to our polling, and I knew this without the poll, but, you know, you got to do the polling because if you don't do it, you're, you're, you're tone deaf. And you're lying to yourself. But according to our poll, our constituents are worried, worried up and foremost about jobs and the economy, number one. Number mm -hmm. two, their main concern is public safety and law and order. Um, they're concerned about the threat, the threat of Antifa and Black Lives Matter marching down their suburban you know, area neighborhoods where they live very peacefully and they can allow their kids to play in the front lawn and, and not be attended. And number three is the defunding of the police is something that's been really shocking to most of the constituency. Just to give you uh, in numbers, 
on a very interesting polling question we, we designed, and it was designed to really weed out the potential and possibilities. 84% of the people who took this poll said that they were willing to cross party lines to keep socialism out of Congress, even though they do not like Donald J. Trump. So that should tell you that should tell you something right there. You know, so, um, go ahead. So great, great, great answers. Um, and, and I'm uh, as as Jim will know, I'm not shy about making suggestions. I uh, I'm not never been politically correct and never intend to be. But I. I did, listening to you, the the passion of what you talked about, your three answers. If I'm going to make a suggestion, and you can do with it what you want, but I would I would like you to consider the possibility that you carry one thing with you from now on at every appearance that you go to, and that's take a policeman's badge and show it to your audience. Every time you go somewhere and every time you talk to somebody in the news media or television, take that badge and say, this is what my people are telling me it's about. They want to be safe. They want to have the police and they want to have a good job. And the police can help all three. Well, uh, here, here's a historic uh, piece of information for you. Just yesterday, mm -hmm. I received the full endorsement of all the Suffolk County, um, which is the Easter end of my district uh, unions. That's superior officers, wow. PBA, sergeants, detectives, corrections, and uh, so on and so forth. Um, today I screened for the NASA. My opponent has rejected and declined to actually screen with the police unions. He's not interested in their support. He believes that with their support he would lose, and he thinks it's a bad thing to represent the men and, w the men and women in blue who keep us safe and who by 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 the way, are the ones who do his personal detail when he is doing all his beautiful photo ops around wow. the district. Because he, he's, he's, I call him photo op Swazi or silent Swazi or taxing Swazi. I mean, he's very famous, don't get me wrong. He, he rose to notoriety back in the, um, the early uh, 2010, 2010, 2011, when he decided to go on a whim and make Nassau County the most expensive and highest tax county in the country. So he's no stranger to socialism and to grabbing uh, people's monies and deep, digging deep into our pockets. Uh, he's just now not a, a county executive. Now he's a congressman. So I, and I don't quite frankly know how that happened. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's what we're up against. But so I, I, I'd like you to think about the idea of taking one of the sponsoring organizations, asking if you could borrow a badge and take it with you and say, this is what it's all about. This is what is important to you as a constituent. You want to be safe, you want to have protection, and you want to have a, a decent job and, and that recovery. And you can't have a decent job and recovery without safety and security in, in where you work. Um, so what are your what are your polls t telling you about your chances? Um, so on the uninformed ballot, this is something that I expected and we all expected. On uninformed ballot, on name recognition alone, I only had 29%. Um, I'm, I'm a challenger. That's normal. That's not actually that bad. We thought it would be worse. Um, and Swazi was doing 47, uh, and I was at 34. So he's already polling under 50, even on the informed ballot, right? Uh, wow. On, on the informed ballot when we test our bios and we remind people hey remember that guy that made your property taxes go from sixteen thousand to <laughs> i don't know 29 <laughs> yeah well that's him <laughs> so the moment you educate on who he is and who i am first generation born american child of immigrants had a rough upbringing i come from a very blue collar neighborhood uh i'm self-made I, as, as you did in, in, in Wall Street, I've made myself a very successful businessman in the last 11 years by waking up at 5.30 in the morning and going to sleep at midnight to make sure I get all my reports in. I'm up to date with the China market. I have at least a good idea of what I'm going to expect the next morning. So I've done it all. I have 11 years of wealth management, money management, M&A, you name it. I've tried to be in every facet of the financial industry. And 
when you test that, people reacted in such a way that was so positive. I ended up at 52% and he ended up at 37. So the ballot flipped. So the war that I'm in now, I'm in the race of my life, not only for me, but for the people of my district. I need to have as much support to get my message out there. And unfortunately, the only way to do that is with a lot of money. And I'm not one that goes around asking people for money just because I understand the times we're living in. But I always remind people, if you can help, it will go to good work. It will go to good use. I have a very lean campaign. Everything that we get goes straight to the cause and to the message. And I am fighting for the race of my life to represent and to fight for the life and livelihoods of the people of not only my district, but of the country. That's so if you, this is that race that I'm in. So if you if you're standing in front of a podium of a bunch of people uh, talking about uh, your campaign, what do you think you want to try and accomplish if you get elected to Congress? One of the first things I would want to enact into Congress is a police protection bill that keeps the identity of police officers, um, uh, um, you know, private, confidential. Yeah. Confidential. Um, I, that's something that I'm very passionate about. New York State just released a law that would pretty much expose any officer's information at a la carte. You pick where, who, when, where they live, and you know. And as a result of that, we're sure to start seeing some pretty nasty things happen, and uh, that worries me. Number two, infrastructure. Our infrastructure in Long Island, and I don't, and, and this is very similar around the country. But as I said earlier in the call, it can't win the little. You get 35 miles an hour winds, it knocks down a tree, boom, it wipes out 100,000 people. Yes, and it takes a week. So I'm sorry, we're living in a first world country with a third world electrical grid system, and that's unacceptable. unacceptable. Who is your power? Is Long Island Lighting your power company? Uh, no, it's P S A G L I. Okay. Um, so, and then number three would definitely be education. Education is the power to ending poverty and ignorance. And the, the proposed, <clears throat> excuse me, the proposed program that uh, Education Secretary Betsy DeVos in, in implemented with the vouchers should be embraced. There's, there's nothing better than being able to have parents open a catalog of schools and say, I'm zoned in a bad area, but I want to make the effort and send my kid to a better area. And just get that voucher and take your kid all the way across town so he can have a better future. I see that as a magnificent tool to destroying the segregated school system of you live in a bad area, you have a bad school district, that's where you're going to get your crappy education, you're going to be demotivated, and you will amass to nothing. You know, because we see this chronically over and over and over again and democrats want to talk about busing but i won't even get into that right kamala harris has said she was uh she was bust when she wasn't even born when busing was taking place <laughs> <laughs> let's, not, let's not ignore the facts that come out of the kamala biden ticket because that is one interesting ticket if if the liberal media were to fact check everything they've ever said i think they've run out of bandwidth to uh <laughs> to have results so um what is your opponent saying about you he doesn't acknowledge me which is great i'm a nobody and that's okay i like being the nobody <laughs> that is awesome we have got george santos with us today george for ny.com is the official website and uh, he joins us today here on skype and um I know that we have just a little bit of time left with you, George. Uh, before we let you go, uh, if if you happen to you you pull this off, you win this thing, which you know it, it odds are it's looking really good for you. Uh, what are some of the things that you're going to do once you get in there? Well, as I just said, I will advocate for the police. I will advocate for legislation to protect them. Yep. I will advocate for infrastructure around the country, not only just my district, specifically uh, on the electrical grid and highways. Congestion is unacceptable. There's ways to decongest roads and highways. There's no reason that a commute between, let's say, Long Island 
in Manhattan should take an hour and 45 minutes when you're driving about 22 miles on. Right, you can do 22 miles in Florida in about 22 minutes. So <laughs> that's we, awesome. We, we we should we should be able to to advocate for things like that, and along with that, education. Right, as I just said. So uh, here's here's my last words. Uh, unless you guys have any questions, this cycle, it's not about politics. It's about ideas and the message that each candidate is bringing to the table. It's not about red or blue, Republican or Democrat. It's not about left or right. It's about what's right for America. And it's definitely not a neo-Marxist socialist agenda that the left is selling us. And, and that's what we need to remember when we go to that ballot box. Yeah. And we're going to fill in those bubbles because we are in the fight of our lives. And this will be the election that will determine the next 20 years of our country Man. and the kids in school today, where will they go? What will they amass to? And if we will have a United States of America 20 years from now. Absolutely amazing. George for NY.com. George Santos with us today. We've got time for one more question. Dan, jump in there, my friend. Um. You talk about education. I, I saw this story yesterday. Uh, I'm assuming that the school districts that you work in your district are doing distance learning over the internet with cameras. Well, it's very. There's. It, it depends, right? The uh, the elementary schools are doing full time, and the um, and the the intermediate schools and the high schools are doing the what they call hybrid. System. Okay. The reason why I'm asking the question is that I've been hearing stories around the country where some school districts are allowing the parents to hear what's being taught in the classroom. And the teachers want to stop that. They don't want the parents to hear what their teachers are teaching to their children. Because they don't want the parents to hear the teachers not teach and in actual fact indoctrinate. They're scared yeah. that they will be reprimanded. Yes. No, I, I, I just wondered if you were aware of that, but, but that's something to think about when you're – so, you know, if you're going to – you know, my concern is that – what percentage do you think of your people in your, in your district are commuters to New York City? Oh, my God, that's 60 percent work in New York City. New and York City they, affects – Are they going? Are they going? So as of now, we're still in remote – affairs right everybody's mm -hmm. still remote the long island railroad has dropped ridership by 70 percent and it still hasn't taken up and remember this is the time of year where everybody likes to go from new york city into the hamptons uh right. or in or into you know just even north port the, as out east um there's the train rides into long beach for manhattan uh and, and for new york city beachgoers they like to go to long beach and the south shore fire island even those routes are empty. People are fleeing the state or people are hunkering down. The ridership has dropped 70%. The MTA is losing money and they can't afford to lose any money. And Long Island and New Yorkers, Long Islanders and New Yorkers are suffering the burden of both a bad mayor, a bad governor, and horrible representatives in the House of Representatives. And if, if they're losing riders and they're losing businesses are closing and not opening, they're going to lose tax revenue, which means they're going to have to raise taxes even higher. Well, yeah, that's their, that's their wish list, and they're doing it. They're just looking for a means to a way. Uh, I'm sorry, a way to a mean by suppressing the businesses, suppressing the ridership, so that when they do those hikes, they do hike the taxes. They're going to have a cause. Unfortunately, Trump failed us with the coronavirus response, so we're obligated to raising their taxes that i can already see all the excuses and all their mythology i mean it's it's so easy to to read into it well thank you so much for your time good luck to you and we'll follow you thank you very much it was a pleasure being on yes and uh all of our uh, all of our listeners out there in the ny area uh i i know we're excited to hear from you today and uh george thanks for doing this my friend thanks for being on with us Thank you, gentlemen. You guys stay safe out there. Thank you, Bye -bye. my friend. And uh, we are going to take a quick time out. And when we come back, we are going to 
tried to get in here. Uh, Dr. 